book of Ecclesiastes and we're in chapter 5 Ecclesiastes chapter 5 since we've been in chapter 5 uh, Solomon has just been going from one subject to another to another and sometimes he's almost difficult to keep up with but uh, he always has a lot of good information for us um, he had been talking about justice and injustice, hadn't he? And uh, one of the things that he said is, do not marvel over the who. Don't marvel over the injustices committed against the poor. Okay? And um, it just kind of... Uh, let me ask you this. Why did he say that? Don't marvel over the injustices of the poor. That's almost hard for us to imagine, isn't it? Okay, yes. Uh, he didn't say don't help the poor. That's not what he said. He says just do not marvel when you see the poor uh, being treated in a wrong way. It's, it's been going on since when? Almost since time has begun, hasn't it? And so he says don't, don't marvel at that. It's been going on a long time, but one of these days God will rectify the... One of the interesting points... Uh, that we can make is this. Many times the rich and the powerful oppress the poor in order to get richer. Okay? Uh, you know, isn't it amazing? It doesn't matter how little you might have, there always seems to be somebody who wants it. Isn't it true? You know? It's amazing. You know... Uh, and that's the way, it's always been that way. Uh, they will squeeze you for every ounce they can get out of you, okay? Uh, because they have a deep desire for what? For wealth and money because they think that wealth and money makes you powerful and makes you happy and it really does very little of those things. And so it's not surprising that Saul, I mean, that Samuel gets into Ecclesiastes 5.10 and he says this, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. And he that loveth abundance with increase, this also is vanity. Wow. He that loveth silver shall not be what? satisfied with silver. Sometimes I hate handing out notes. Okay? What I would really like to do is just hand out my notes at the end of class rather than at the start of class. Why do you think that is? Make people listen. You see, sometimes I want to ask questions. And I want to hear your answers, not mine. If I hand out notes, you give me my answers. Because you're reading my notes. That ain't right. That don't make me happy. Okay? I already know what I wrote down there. Okay? I like to know what you have to think about it. Okay? Dutch? Oh, absolutely. Yep. Makes a difference. Big difference. But, uh, well, that too, but, if, but see, if I ask a question with you, okay, rather than you giving me your answer, you're reading my notes. And you'll read exactly what I just said. And see, I'm really wanting your input. He that loveth silver shall not be what? Satisfied with silver. So my question is, what does it mean to be satisfied? Okay, what's the definition of satisfied? To feel like you have enough. Like you have enough. Okay, anybody else? All needs have been met. 
to be content, okay, happy, all right. Um, just look at the definitions there. I thought they were interesting. Uh, and one of them is exactly what Gail just said, to have enough, to have plenty. Brown Driver and Briggs says, to be fulfilled, to have one's fill of. Okay, that's what it means to be satisfied. But notice what he says. They who love silver will never be what? Satisfied. They will never have what? Enough. It will never be plenty enough for those individuals. That's amazing, isn't it? The accumulation of wealth only produces a desire for what? More and more and more and more. Abundance, watch this, and superabundance does not produce contentment. Isn't that amazing? Abundance and superabundance will not produce contentment. Here's my question. Why can't the rich be satisfied? What's the deal with that? Greed? Okay. Huh? Competition. Competition? What do you mean by that? Ah, so he wants to be better and bigger than the other rich cats that are out there. Maybe so, okay, absolutely. That happens, doesn't it, okay? Um, sometimes we don't stop and think about us as people, okay? Um, God created us, and we are very unique beings, are we not? And one of the most interesting things about a human being is that his body operates as a chemical and electrical machine. Okay? Isn't that amazing? We don't think about that, do we? That our bodies are just full of chemicals, and those chemicals are constantly operating on an electrical grid. Okay? If the chemicals get messed up, guess what? We're messed up. If the electrodes and uh, the electrical cycle doesn't fire just right, guess what? We get messed up. Okay, And there's a lot of ways that you can influence the chemicals and the electrical circuit that's found in your body. Did you know that? You can inject drugs into your body. And guess what? It radically alters the chemicals and the electrical system in your body. Uh, guess what food is? Food is just turned into a compound that is turned into what? Chemicals in your body so your body can function and live correctly. Alright? Now here's what's really interesting to me. There are some things you can take into your body and yet you never literally inject them therein. Okay? And yet they can have an unbelievable impact on your system. And guess what? Riches are one of those, isn't it? I've never seen anybody try to inject a $5 bill into their veins. Have you? Doesn't happen. I've never seen anybody try to take a $100 coin, melt it down, and drink it. And say, ooh, he's drunk on gold. But guess what you can get drunk on? You can get drunk on gold and silver and your body can desire it, and uh, it, can be, it can become an addiction to your system. Okay? And that's why we have to be very careful about everything that is in the world. Okay? Because almost anything can become what? An addiction to us. Okay? Uh, and, and it feeds our system, and it, and it gives us satisfaction, or it makes us feel good. There's a lot of individuals, the reason they want wealth is because... Man, just look how much money I made on that deal. But guess what they've got to do next? Find a bigger deal next time to get even more because the high is not there anymore.
So our bodies are very unique um, things that God has created. And notice that he says, or the Bible tells us that contentment is a command, isn't it? We're to be content with such things as you have. Wow. How many of us are really that way? And we don't know how to control it, do we? we? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, notice point D down there. Folks, in, now, well, let me, let's go back to the verse first and listen to what Solomon says again. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. So in other words... You know, if your life is built on just getting and getting and getting and getting and getting, you will never be what? You will never be satisfied. So that leads me to point D. Perhaps we need to yearn for something other than silver in abundance. Okay? Almost everybody will say something like this, Ooh, I sure do wish I could win the lottery. Right? Or I sure do wish... Used to be Ed McMahon. He's, he, I think he's out of commission now. Wanted everybody, Ed McMahon, to come to their house, right? Okay? Publisher's Clearing House. That's right. You know, ooh, if I could just win that, you know, boy, we lick them stamps and put them on there, and, you know, they won't stick. And see, I've done it too. I know what it's all about. But instead of winning the lottery, maybe we should yearn for contentment. You know what? Instead of being given a couple of million dollars, maybe we just need to ask to be satisfied with what we already have. Instead of being will, willed a huge inheritance, why don't you just ask to take pleasure in the things you already possess? That's hard to do, isn't it? Why is it so hard in our society to be satisfied? There's so much out there available. Okay, number one, there is. There's a lot out there that is available, isn't it? Okay, um, so um, just because there is that, we, we know it's out there. We come in contact with it every day, don't we? Okay, What's it, why is another reason it's so hard to be satisfied? Jane? Oh yes, we, we, we can easily develop a heart of jealousy and uh, a heart of uh, covetousness almost, can't we? When we see other people have these things and therefore we desire the things that they have and we think that wouldn't it be wonderful to have those things, okay? Okay, yeah, we, we have this idea that uh, if we have all these things, that our life will be easier, more comfortable, better, right? Do we have a lot of people out in our world today who are constantly tempting us with this stuff? You know, people who produce this stuff aren't stupid, are they? They're pretty smart. They have what they call marketers. And guess what those marketers do? Well, they tempt us like crazy, don't they? It's why today you watch a 30-minute television program and 17 minutes is commercials. They're just constantly what? Constantly feeding you, aren't they? What always amazed me is this. And it just, it just is un unreal to me. You see a car today, and you look at that car, and you go, wow, that is a fine automobile right there. So fine that I'd love to what? 
love to buy it, right? Ten years from now, you see that same car and you go, ugh. I used to think that was cute. I used to think that is something that I want. I used to think that was, man, my dream. And now I look at it and I go, are you kidding me? Yeah, Brett, he, he got a thing for Mustangs. Okay, he'll come forward next hour. Okay. <laughs> uh, Larry? You know, one reason uh, that this happens richly, in our country, we are fed a philosophy that everybody should be equal. There shouldn't be any rich people and poor people. Yep. That we are, we are I'll be the same. No. And, uh, but we've been fed that by it, and, and people now think, well, why shouldn't I have it? He has it, then I should have it. Right. And the crazy thing about it is that the sameness that we want is a level of income that is way up here. Okay? Which, when you get into a society that gives everybody the same, guess what? It ain't way up here, guys. It's way down here. Okay, and it's dang. Notice that last statement I've got in there. Man wishes for something, he gets it. Now, ain't that a hoot? He wishes for more. Solomon said, This also is what? Vanity. Isn't that something? Now, let me ask you something. Is anyone guilty of that last statement? You wish for something, you get it, and then you wish for more? Oh, yeah. You know? When I was a manager, I couldn't, especially when I was in Seattle, I couldn't keep people in jobs more than three, four months. Because they wanted, like, more. After, yeah, they wanted after four months, six months, they wanted to be promoted into something else and something higher. Right. Sure. And they were always seeing, okay, well, this person has this, and this person, you know, they have less skills than I do, and I can get this. So it was, it was really hard. And it is hard for companies. I mean, and it's, it's another reason for the push that they have to make. Absolutely. Absolutely. Beverly? I need, I need me a lapel pin with that on it. Locally hated, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Wow. That's pretty bold, isn't it? Pretty bold. But that, that's, that's the way we are. We want, we want to be the what? We'd like to be the top dog, don't we? And uh, if we're not, uh, we're not satisfied. Ecclesiastes 5.11. Watch this next statement. When goods increased, they are increased that what? Eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof? Saving the beholding of them with their eyes. Wow. When goods are increased, they are increased that what? Eat them. Has Solomon in this letter increased his goods? 
talked about houses. He's talked about business. He's talked about pleasure. He's talked about gardens. He's talked about travel. He, he's talked about so many things that he has done. He has accumulated so many things to himself. And then guess what he says? He says this, They are increased that eat them. Ugh. If I've got two houses, guess what I have to do? They have to be maintained, don't they? I've got a fr our friend that lives across the street. His name's Larry. And a uh, great guy. And, I say, and I'm not saying anything wrong with two houses. I'm just illustrating the point. Okay? He's got a house here. He's got a house up near the mountains. Okay? Well, not too long ago, a tornado comes through. And he's got a neighbor that calls him. Hey, Larry, guess what? You got a boatload of limbs down in your yard. Fortunately, none on your house. So guess what you got to do? You got to call somebody to come pick up the limbs. Yeah, I've got more, but now I've got to what? I got to pay more, right? All these wealthy people, guess what they've got? They got servants. They've got marketers, they've got planners, they've got uh, serve, I mean, they got people that cook for them, they got all kinds of stuff. Well, guess what you got to do? You got to pay them and feed them, insure them, don't you? You see, when you increase goods, then you're going to have more people that you have to what? You have to feed. And that's Solomon's point, okay? The more a person has, the more individuals that are needed to take care of everything. Servants, maintenance, landscapers, chauffeurs, etc. And guess what? When you bring those people on board, you also inherit a boatload of problems, don't you? You know? There's not, there's not a person on the face of the earth who doesn't have a problem. And occasionally, they don't mind bringing that problem with them wherever they go. You know it? And sometimes, all of a sudden, you find yourself on what? The receiving end of their problem. I didn't ask for this. Oh, yes, you did. The minute you what? The minute that you brought this person into your life is the very moment that you have a chance of assuming their problems. Don't you? There are more concerns to be addressed. There are more problems that arise. There are more people that have to be pleased. There are more chances of being wronged. Man. And notice what else he says. And what good is there to the owners thereof? Saving the beholding of them with their eyes. Why does a man need six houses? You can't live in six houses at one time. Can you? It's, an impo it's impossible. And so while you're living in one, guess what's the only thing you can do with the other five? Look at them. It's true, isn't it? Let me show you the picture of my other five houses. I can bring you into this one and show you this one, but guess what? I can't live in the rest of them. What's the purpose of having 13 cars? Hey, come on in my garage. I want to show you something. I've been looking at these all morning. Which one do you drive? None of them. They're only there to what? For the beholders to look at. <laughs> uh, how often do they ever use a lot of the things that they have? Maybe even some of us. In years gone by, but we thought we had to have these things right. And we go out and we buy them. We spend a lot of money. We bring them home. And guess where they are now? Sitting in cabinets. Right? Call your kids. You want my china? No, Mom, don't want that nasty china. Call 
Call my kids. Hey, Vic. I mean, hey, Michael, you want my books? No, Dad, I don't want them nasty books. What good are they? You see, Solomon says this also is what? Vanity. <clears throat> well, I think I told you that. I told my kids one time, who wants my books? They said, nobody. I said, well, there's some, there's some pretty, a few good ones in there that are worth a little money. They said, pull them out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> let me ask you this as you get older do you realize that you don't need much you know it, 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 one, one of the worst things is when your kids call and say what do you want for Christmas you know what because guess what I don't need anything okay I really don't. And if you told them that, they ain't no telling what you're going to get. You know? So you better think of something. You know what? But you really don't need a thing, do you? I wrote down here a question. Have you ever purchased something or been given something? And maybe you even asked for it. And you just laid it aside and never used it? Has that ever happened to you? It's unbelievable, isn't it? <clears throat> and so the question is what? Why do I have it? What was the purpose in my spending the money to, to, to obtain it? Just to look at it? And that's what Solomon says. What good is there to the owners there saving the beholding of them with their eyes? Somebody comes over. Hey, let me show you all my pistols. And you got 50 of them. <laughs> when, when, no. I have 60. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm serious. You know, when, when did you shoot? Well, I hadn't shot them in a long time. What, what, what's that all about? It's vanity, isn't it? Notice the question that Solomon asked. And what good is there to the owners thereof. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could honestly only purchase the things we really need? It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be unbelievable, wouldn't it? A lot of companies would go out of business. Did you know that? Because there wouldn't be people out here buying foolishly. There wouldn't be people out here who would be uh, tempted into buying something that they don't need or just going to set aside. You just buy exactly what you need. We did a mission work one time. It was in Louisiana. I can't remember exactly where it was, but there was a husband and a wife down there, and they had three little bitty kids. Okay, when I say little bitty, they were under the age of four, all of them. And um, the husband was the only one who worked, and they lived in a single wide trailer. They drove a used car, and the wife... Always drove the husband to work. Okay? And their rationale was this. We don't need things. Our kids need their mama. Man, do you see very many people living like that? You could tell all the clothes were hand-me-downs. Okay? They, 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 didn't, they didn't dress extravagantly in things. They, they were just, but, but just the best Christian family. But at least they had a concept on things, didn't they? And they knew what was important in the world. And all of us need to try to develop um, that kind of an attitude. Questions, comments, anybody? Yes, how? Oh, man. That'd be a kicker, wouldn't it? That's when you call the insurance. <laughs> Notice Ecclesiastes 5.12. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Whether he eat little or much. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to what? To sleep man. Those who work hard, they sleep good at night. Did you know that? 
They sleep good at night. You see, the body craves what? Rest. Rejuvenation. So you work hard and you sleep well. But notice also what he says. He says this, whether he eats little or what? Or much. If he comes home and he's worked hard and he eats a steak and a baked potato and a salad and a piece of cheesecake, that's good. He's still going to what? He's still going. He's still going. He, he's still going to sleep. He's going to sleep good, isn't he? But what if he comes home and he opens up the cupboard and there is no steak and all that stuff and all he's got is a bowl of Cheerios? He'll eat his Cheerios and he'll go to bed and guess what he'll do? He'll still sleep good, whether he has little or whether he has much. The sleep of a working man is sweet. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. Why? Why? Why can't the rich man sleep? Jeannie? Ah, yeah, he's got a lot of worries, doesn't he? I put down there some questions that he might be asking. Can I deal with the problem of my business? Will my investments continue to make money? Can I repay the loan? Who's plotting against me? Are all of my goods safe? Constant what? Constant worry. Constant worry. Um, I bet we would be amazed sometime if we could get in the heads of some rich people and just live in their heads for about a week. With, with, with all the worries, with all the concerns, with all the travails, with all the difficulties that they experience, you want to know what you might say at the end of the week? I want out of this guy's head. Huh? You don't even want to go there? But it would be interesting, wouldn't it? It would be interesting. Fret and worry plague the minds of the rich. I put a lesson down here. Riches can bring more problems into a person's life than they do blessings. Sleep is a what? Sleep's a blessing, folks. It impacts a lot of other things in our life. And I pulled up an article and they listed uh, about 11 different things that benefit us if we can sleep. Okay? We live longer. Our memories are improved. Infla uh, inflammation decreases. Creativity increases. Improved performance. Improved grades. Better focus, weight control. Maybe some of us need to sleep more. <laughs> Lower stress, few ac fewer accidents, improved mood. Are, th those are intangibles for the most part, aren't they? But you see, wh what if you can't sleep? And it's all because you're this rich person who's constantly played with problems and you can't sleep. So you wake up to a pretty miserable life, don't you? Whereas here's a guy, he doesn't have much, sleeps good, but every day he gets up feeling fine. Got good health. He's ready to work. He's ready to go. He's content with what he has. He's not plagued with all those problems. There's a big difference between the two people, aren't there? Big difference. Most of the people that win the lottery... <laughs> Oh, absolutely. That, well, the same is true of ball players that make millions and millions of dollars by the time, you know, five or ten years after they're done with their uh, stint in the sports field, they don't have their money. Uh, it happens to a lot of people. Absolutely. All right, questions, comments, anybody? Uh, Jeannie? I don't even want to hear yours. <laughs> Oh, there's no doubt about it. There, there's problems connected to both. Okay, uh, and uh, that's the reason the Bible does not contend that you be rich or poor. The Bible contends what you be in the center. Okay, and you be content with the things that you have, Rodney. Oh yes, absolutely. They're, 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 it, it's, it's because they need it and want it, don't they? They long for what others have. Dutch? Being in the Navy, as long as I have, almost 30 years, I had the opportunity to go to a lot of other countries. I preached in the jungle. I uh, did a lot of mission work. And uh, I saw people living in grass huts that were just as happy as 
Oh, yeah. Crazy, isn't it? And you just, you don't realize how little you can live on and be satisfied. We in this country are overblessed, and that is how we have such a vast difference where the rich overlook. Oh, yeah. And that's the reason it's good for us to go on mission trips and other things and see what others don't have. But like you said, they're still happy people, you know, and it's, it's, it's a big difference. All right, guys, thank you very much. We'll pick up there next week.